Why are there JPEG artifacts over the blood splatters? <laughs> the, <screen>? Yes! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is 3-Hit Combo Podcast. My name is Matt. I have a fill-in. One man covers for two. His name is Tyler. What's up? What's up? I don't know if I'm really two, but... <laughs> hey, you you would remember Tyler if you've listened... God, what was it, three years ago? I think no, long ago. On... That was like six years ago. <laughs> I I think you were on like... It was like a one one of the days after SGC or something, like right after you like moved back. Oh yeah. I oh think it I was, was it was right after SGC when you moved back to your with your dad for a while. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Then you were on then and And it's been that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been ages. Uh as people know, Andy is still in Jamaica. Tam is I don't know, he said he had car problems. So I don't know. I don't know what's up with Tam. I guess we'll find out. Man, everybody's having car problems. I know. Yeah, I'm having car problems too. After replace a goddamn EGR valve, which it doesn't look like it's going to be that hard. But I started last night. Um, there's only two bolts you need to take off the thing, and it just just looking at those fucking things, it's going to take like the Hulk to get those off. They are like <laughs> rusted and shut in, and so I. Uh, I got at him with some like PB blaster shit that like gets into the threads and then uh, a, a wire brush to at least try and get some crap off of it because boy, that is going to be a bitch later. I'm doing that today. Do you have an impact wrench at least? Uh, the impact won't fit in there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But we do have, I mean, we do have a ratchet with the extender handle. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's easier to use if uh, you, you got more leverage. So. Um, we'll probably be able to get it, but God damn, I, I can already, oh, just punch my mic. I can see that being a bitch. And then we got to, it doesn't look like it's going to be super hard, but it looks like it might be a little bit of a pain in the ass, but I mean, it's worth it because my card's fucking up. So yeah, it's, it's funny because, um, I got a refund on a video game. Like, so I, I dropped 60 bucks. And then, like, the next day I refunded it because South Park's delayed. So I got the refund. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll get my 60 bucks back. And then, you know, later that day, like, hey, you need a $78 part. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. So, yeah, I got to do that. It's uh, it's messing with my exhaust, which I've noticed a lot of problems. Actually, like, a good year ago, um, I started noticing that when I come to a complete stop... And I try to accelerate, my car will like jerk a little bit. And it was really annoying. And at the time, people were saying the EGR valve. And I was like, well, it's an expensive part for just kind of a guess, so I'll wait. And then now I've got problems with like, the, it doesn't really want to accelerate that much, like very easily. And it's, I still got the jerking. And then finally, I got the check engine light. So we have a code reader. So I used that and I got the code that was basically said exhaust. Uh, points to EGR valve. Hmm. So, and my emission status was like in the red, which means my emissions are like they're not getting out of my car. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you need to get those things out. And the valve's not regulating those, which is why I'm having so many problems. But if I don't fix it and I just let it go unchecked, it's gonna hurt the catalytic converter. Which is yeah, significantly thousand dollar replacement. I just replaced one. Did you really? Yeah, oh, it's God. about a thousand bucks. Yeah, so that's a significantly more expensive thing to do. Which is why I was like, well, maybe I could wait. I'm like, no, 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 no. As long as that check engine lights on, I'm not gonna drive that car. Yeah, Even the... though I'm, I'm probably sure I could probably drive that for. I could probably drive for months, really, 
before something actually goes wrong, but it's telling me right now that something's about to go wrong, so. Yeah, we had our check engine light on for months, like, earlier this year, and it was, we took it in, and the catalytic converter was, like, split oh. on one, like, the seam was, like, splitting, and he was like, yeah, it was only a matter of time before this thing just actually just popped off. Oh, my God. That sucks. Man. These fucking cars, man. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just had to replace the serpentine belt and the brake rotors, too. The serpentine belt's not so bad. Rotors. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was like a 300-something dollar ordeal. Yeah, did you, you replaced all four? Yep. I replaced... I, I told you about this. I replaced one. Mm -hmm. Granted, I had some help, because like I said, I was like in my teens. But I did break one rotor, and I've replaced that. And that was a bitch. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta take the whole wheels off, or in the serpentine belt, you gotta take them off anyway, so... Yeah. yeah, it was a whole ordeal. I couldn't do it because I don't have a garage. Or, well, I have a garage, but mm -hmm. I don't have a jack or anything else. So, yeah, yeah, that's nice. We got all that shit here, so I could do all that work. We got the jack that slowly goes down, so you really want to use jack stands before you get under it, because mm -hmm. <laughs> it'll like you'll you'll jack something up, and then you can just see it so ever slowly coming back down, and you're like. You're like, I don't want to get the fuck under that <laughs> because it's coming <laughs> down. And the jack has like a hair trigger when you're trying to let the car down. So like when you're turning the thing to let it to let it down, it'll like be easy, easy, easy. And you'll hit that hair trigger and it'll go boom, <laughs> back to the ground. So I've gotten somewhat better at letting that thing down easy. But that is like, it goes from nothing to everything very quickly. <laughs> but it's a good jack. <laughs> it jacks things Yeah, it jacks things Got more jacks than an iPhone 7 <laughs> Oh Ooh. So one Yeah, well, we're not going to top that Podcast over <laughs> Alright So Cars, oh, so speaking of cars We played Rocket League last night Yep, was and good fun Was it just me or Were we kicking ass well, yeah, most of the time we were like winning like four to one or something ridiculous. Yeah, we were kicking ass in that game. If only we had a goalie. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been nice. <laughs> we were on Tyler's case last night. He was getting pretty rustled. No, I wasn't getting rustled. No, you were getting <laughs> rustled. <laughs> There's no way I could have blocked that. <laughs> hey, there were some impossible saves there. And I had some that I made... I was surprised that new mode with all the power ups. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised how really not that fun that was. Yeah, it seemed kind of just hectic. Yeah, it was just kind of a mess, and it wasn't like in a good way. I feel like if the power ups were on the level, it'd be more interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was just like, you get a power up, and you... it seems like I, I don't know. Maybe I need to play a little bit more, but it just seems like the power ups only really helped you like knock people out of the way but like getting the ball and scoring unless you had like the spikes it really didn't matter yeah the spikes were cool yeah and the magnet was kind of fun if you got it right yeah that that was fun i also i liked the uh it's it's weird to use though it's like the suction cup arrow mm -hmm. because it doesn't pull the ball back to you it launches you into the ball and mm -hmm. every time I've tried to use it, like, you shoot the suction cup that sticks to the ball, and you expect the ball to come back, but instead, like, you go at the ball and hit it, like, directly in a straight direction. It was weird. Yeah, I got it a couple times, but... Yeah, yeah, it's it's really goofy. And then, but then there is another one that actually pulls the ball back, so... Yeah, I think it's a grappling hook one. Yeah, the grappling hook. Or maybe it's vice versa, I don't remember. Yeah, so, fuck, I don't know, man. They're both similar. <laughs> but it was fun playing Rocket League. It was too easy. Oh, yeah, too that guy. Too easy. Yeah, we had a guy that, when uh, his team beat us, he was like, too easy, and then we... They beat us 0-1, to one, like, at the very yeah. last second oh, they yeah. got a oh, goal. Oh, that, that was when they scored with zero seconds left. Yeah. Yeah, who was the goalie? That was a goal. I hit the ball. <laughs> it just went in. So they beat us 0-1, to one, and then we rematched them, and we won. 
And then we rematched him again, and I think they beat us pretty good that time. Yeah, it was like, like 6-0. to zero. <laughs> Yeah. But then we rematched him again. We played four matches against them, mm-hmm. and we won the fourth one. So I thought we were going to get a rubber match, but they left. That sucks. Yeah, because that was the one that we're like, okay, it's not too easy anymore. <laughs> it's Steffi Seal. Uh, so Rock- Rocket League's fun. I've been also playing Skyrim quite a bit. Trying to not suck. Trying to finally beat the damn thing. It's been five years. I never beat it. I mean, I put like hundreds of hours, but I never beat the story. Same yeah. with Fallout. I The only one I really beat, well, other than the first two, was New Vegas. I never beat three or four. I, I've beaten all those. Three, New Vegas, and four. I haven't played Nuka World yet, though. I didn't really like four. I didn't get very far in it. You didn't like four? No, I got to the baseball mm-hmm. stadium and stopped. You're one of those fucking guys. <laughs> it's not a Fallout game. Well, I mean, it was a fine game, but it didn't really feel like an RPG at all. I, I agree with you. I agree with what people are saying, that it didn't really feel like much of a an RPG, like very Fallout-ish. It wasn't a bad game. I mean, it was fine. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't what I wanted out of yeah. a Fallout game. Yeah, I... I, st- I mean, yeah, I liked it, but I, I can't agree when people look at it. Like, it definitely wasn't, it had quite a bit of differences from, like, say, New Vegas. It also had the, I don't know, it was just nice in, like, the older games where you'd find, like, a really cool weapon that was, like, unique. Mm-hmm. And it's like, in that game, it's like, well, I found this cool new unique weapon, but it's not as good as my broken-ass revolver that kills everything <laughs> in one hit. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I've been playing to play the Nuka World DLC, the... The problem is, I mean, it's it's a good problem to have, but, like, I've got a ton of mods. So, like, mm-hmm. I've had to prep myself by up- updating all my mods in the Fallout script extender. Mm-hmm. Because every time there's an update, the Fallout script extender, it well, it depends on what the update is, but the Fallout, Fallout script extender will come out after that. So, like, if there's an update that affects the script extender, like, you have to wait, like, another few days for the new script extender or else a lot of your mods will break. Yeah, I remember that's how it was when Skyrim first came out, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the only one that would really, really matter to me that much is I have the mod that re-enables achievements, because... Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you use mods, mods. you can't get achievements, which is not the fucking case in New Vegas, or 3, but it is in Fallout 4. Yeah, so, and I don't even have, like, I don't have any, like, straight-up cheating mods. Like, I've got a, a different armor mod. Like, I got a nano suit. But all my other mods are stuff like I made dog meat a Siberian husky. <laughs> I have a black and white pit boy. I have more radio stations. Um, the moon is Bob Ross. I mean, that's kind of cheating. <laughs> I'm inspired every time I look up in the air. So... Yeah, it's kind of silly. And that's that one relies on the script extender, so... I don't know. At one point, I did have all the achievements in Fallout, but I've fallen behind. Because I haven't gotten any of the ones from the Vault Tech DLC, and I don't have any ones from the Nuka World. Yeah, I haven't gotten a perfect game since... Well, I perfected Rebirth, Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Mm-hmm. But before that, it was like Spelunky, and that was it. I have... By the way, someone gifted me Spelunky. So... I can play Splunky. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've no, seen I mean, it. well, the base game is not as hard, but like the yeah. achievements, especially Speed Lunky and the Zero Gold. The Zero Gold is the one that gave me the most trouble. Mm-hmm. Cause, oh, like, you have to avoid. Yeah, because gold just falls on you in that game. Like you'll kill something and it'll just like fall on you. So you have to like be wary of it. And there's Man. like little trees that like will hide gold in the leaves that you can't see unless you walk over it. So you have to like hop around the trees just in case there's a gold there. Dude, that is just like Shovel Knight. Gold doesn't necessarily fall on you, but there's tons of times where gold is behind like a banner or something. Mm-hmm. So if you jump, you hit a piece of gold, and there's an achievement for not getting any gold through a uh, order of no quarter stage. And it is a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? We were talking about games, and I mentioned Spelunky. Uh, oh, uh, perfect games. I I actually have perfected two games this year. Although Fallout was taken away from me viciously, but I got the uh, the perfect for uh, uh, game dev tycoon. Oh, sorry, I couldn't spit that one out. 
I don't know how many achievements are in there. I haven't even really looked at it. 15? No. One of them's hard as shit, though. It's called Unobtainium. You have to sell, like... Uh, I have, I forget exactly what the, the thing is. Actually, let me just pull it up here and see what we can get. Uh, unobtainium. Game Dev Tycoon. All right, what was the achievement again? Just, uh, just, just, uh, looking here. How to achieve an obtaining them. This achievement you will receive if you've published 100 million copies. Phew. Sorry. 100 million copies of a game in Game Dev Tycoon. And if you've played Game Dev Ty Tycoon, that's fucking hard. Yeah, I played it when it was... For when it first came out, I think the most I ever sold is like a million. And MMOs apparently don't work for the achievement. So you can't make an MMO and then keep making expansions. Well, I mean, not even WoW had 100 million. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I mean, like, but those are the ones you usually get the most most sales on because they yeah. last forever. But it doesn't work for the achievement. It has to be like a straight up regular really, ass have game. Have there even been any games that have sold that much? I have no idea. I wouldn't think so. But I mean, it is, it is called unobtainium. Yeah. So. So there is that. Uh, Tyler, you want to go into gaming news? Talk about some games? I don't know anything about games. Well, I will hold your hand. <laughs> gaming news so great, you'll be coming back for more. I need it. This is gaming news. All right, like I alluded to earlier, fractured but whole, delayed till 2017. That sucks ass. Yeah, how much how was the first one delayed for? Didn't they delay it for like three months too? I think they did. Right now they're just saying quarter one, but quarter one could be anywhere from January 1st to March 31st. So we'll see. They'll probably narrow it down like as they get closer. But still, that sucks. Because that was, like I said, that was the game. I was like, it was supposed to come out the first week of December. And it was a little early. But I was like, well, I got the cash. So I'll just pre-order it. Because I know I'm going to get it. I know I'm going to get this game. So, pre-ordered it. And then it was like a couple hours later. Like, I pre-ordered it before I went to work. And then on my first break, I read the news that it was delayed. I'm like, what the fuck? So, at first I was just going to let it... I don't know, man. I don't want to have 60 bucks tied up until, like, April. You know? Yeah. It's only September. So, I got the refund, and then just a minute later, Oh, you need a part for your car, dickbag. I swear to God, it called me dickbag. Wow. Where'd you go? Midas? <laughs> no. In fact, I went to Advanced Auto Parts, <laughs> and I was telling everybody about the lady with... Who was missing like oh, 17. Oh, that's right. And I was like, go up there. Go up there, man. Go look. Her name was Tara. T-E-R-R-A. Yeah, she ain't looking so hot after Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> she is not. So there is a big sale going on right now at Green Man Gaming. I'm trying to find the, the end date for this, but it does not seem to tell me the end date. Anyway. So with the code VIP3, there's some deals going on. Uh, you can get Fallout 4 on Steam for $24, which is pretty good. Far Harbor for $15, Automatron $6, Wasteland Workshop $3, Contraptions Workshop, again, $3, Vault Tech Workshop for $2.22. You know what pisses me off about Fallout? How there's a million DLC and they don't add much? Yeah, there's all this Workshop DLC. Like Automatron added, it did add one quest. I mean, one quest line. So I guess that's like five quests. But anyway, I had one quest line and the ability to make robots. Now, the quest line was fine and the robots were were cool and whatever, but it's just not like, like Fallout New Vegas. Like every DLC, there were there were many DLCs that were like a ton of content. Like they did come out with like the gun runners arsenal or something, which added some guns. I think that was just like a pre-order thing, though, wasn't it? I don't think it was. 
I remember there was a pre-order thing, but yeah, I think you're right. But all the other DLC was like it was old world blues and dead money and uh what the hell? honest hearts lonesome road like those were big things but only two like big dlc came out for fallout 4 far harbor and nuka world and they sell those then they say those are the only two that are coming yeah out? and they're done yeah nuka world was the last one the game's not even a year old and they're just they're done done with dlc what the fuck I did see there was a community-made DLC that they're working on where it takes you to the Pacific Northwest. And I was like, oh, cool. When's that coming out? It's like three years away. Oh, yeah. Those community mods take forever because it's yeah. usually only like two or three guys working on it. Yeah. Well, I think they got someone like a small team working on this one, but still. Well, even that one Skyrim one that took like five years. I don't remember mm-hmm. the name of it. Yeah. I, I I know what you're talking about. I don't remember the name either, but I know what you're talking about. There's also deals on Borderlands. You can get you can get the handsome bundle for thirty bucks. The list price is one hundred and thirty dollars. What's the handsome bundle? I think it's Borderlands with just the whole. It's all the DLC with it too. I don't even remember that game having DLC. It's uh, I I I figured out what this is. It's Borderlands Two Game of the Year Edition. Borderlands the pre sequel and Borderlands the pre sequel season pass. Oh the telltale hearts thing wasn't that what it was the pre-sequel something like that i don't know or telltale that. games not telltale yeah. hearts yeah telltale oh yeah, yeah yeah yes 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 i heard it wasn't that good really well it was from a fan a person who really liked borderlands 2 that she didn't like it i heard the batman telltale series was not that good i've heard actually quite a few of their games have not been that good like, i've i've heard I mean, obviously, The Walking Dead has been really good. Yeah. Because I played those two. And those were the ones that put them on the map. And I, I heard, heard the Game of Thrones kind of flopped. and I heard Minecraft Story Mode was pretty good. Yeah, but I hear it's really, you can't really enjoy it unless you're like 12 or younger. <laughs> really? But I have heard mixed reviews about Game of Thrones and Batman. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. What, oh, they had Back to the Future, didn't they? Did they? Actually, I kind of heard people like that one, though. I've only played... I've only played the Walking Dead one, though, so I don't really know too much about them. Um, the Telltale one is something else, not the pre-sequel. Because the pre-sequel is, it looks just like a, it's another Borderlands game. Hmm. What is oh, that? it's Tales from Borderlands, I think yes, is the name of it. Yes, that's it, Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah. That's it. There's probably someone listening right now going, like, fucking idiots. <laughs> Tales from the Borderlands. But yeah, the pre-sequel, uh, shit, you go buy it. Great Man Gaming. Uh, digital Homicide attempts to sue Steam users. Who's Digital Homicide? Digital Homicide made headlines for filing a lawsuit against Jim Sterling, a former Destructoid staff member that fairly, and a fairly outspoken gaming critic. In an attempt to stay relevant, Digital Homicide has fi- filed another frivolous lawsuit against critics. This time they're targeting Steam users. Oh, for rating their game bad? Yes. Who? What? What game do they make? I believe. Yes, the Slaughtering Grounds. Never heard of it. <laughs> Look up. I swear to God. And I, I've I've only watched. I think this is like the only Jim Sterling video I've watched. So. Um, I don't really know much about the guy, but look up Jim Sterling, the Slaughtering Grounds. I just gotta see what this game looks like. I've never. Even oh my God, it's horrible. You know what? I have it on Steam. I bought it for, I swear to God, like less than 20 cents. Holy shit, it looks really, like it looks like a very old game. It, it does. And oh, it's just, he can explain it way better than I can, but it is god awful. Everyone listening, look up Jim Sterling, The Slaughtering Grounds. It'll bring you to it. Why are there JPEG artifacts over the blood splatters? <laughs> the <screen>? Yes! <laughs> Oh god! Oh, that UI is just looks like it's one of a those, mess. The game well, is a huge mess, and he called it a mess. And then they called him out. the The way they handled being criticized was like a bunch of babies. I mean, clearly they're suing Steam users. Oh, like the braid guy? Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, but a little bit worse, I would say. He was very complaining and whiny, but they were very like, "You can't do this." Oh, <laughs> you can't criticize. You can't us. have an opinion. Yeah. 
Oh, it's so funny. Uh, the subpoena also mentions that James Romney, Ramin, is looking for $18 million in restitution for, quote, personal injury. I, I don't think that's going to stand. Yeah. I hope Judge Judy takes this one. <laughs> you created a shitty game, Digital Homicide. God. When did this game come out? I don't even remember hearing about it. A couple of years ago. Hmm. I guess they're just broke and they're like, oh, we really need money. Let's look at that review we got two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, uh, I don't have enough space over here for my mixer and my keyboard. Yeah, I had to get a new desk and I got a monitor stand mm -hmm. and it's like made like my desk space infinitely larger. It came out October 31st, 2014. So, yeah, we're looking at two years. Yeah, I mean, I have enough space without the mixer, but when I'm doing the podcast, the mixer takes up like a third of the space. Oh, yeah. So I'm just over here with the keyboard. Like. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Sony boss thinks No Man's Sky could have been marketed better. I I think they did plenty of marketing. <laughs> I don't think that was the issue. I heard someone explain it. <clears throat> the best way I heard No Man's Sky explained is that uh, it's a mile wide and an inch deep. Yeah, that's yeah. how all the. I feel like that's a lot of those games like that, like mm -hmm. overly ambitious, super huge open world. It's like, wow, look at all this place in Far mm -hmm. Cry I can go. Oh, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, like you can go explore all this cool stuff, but. You know, once you've explored a couple things, you're like, okay, but now what can I do? It's like, you can mine. All right, I'm done. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's how I felt with Far Cry. Like, Far Cry 3 and 4, it's like, oh, cool, I get to murder all these animals and, like, get cool stuff. And mm -hmm. then I did it, and I was like, all right, I, I, the story's kind of boring, and there's really nothing else to do. I can't believe I beat Far Cry 3. Because Ugh, that story was so garbage, I could not like half, it was physically painful. Halfway through it, when I got this the second island, <clears throat> it literally felt like a chore. Yeah, it was. Ugh, I don't was, know why, but I beat it. I, I started Far Far Cry Four, but I haven't made it very far. The biggest problem with the Far Cry games on on PC is that you have to have you play. Yep, you know, which sucks. And I believe South Park is going to be the same way because it's also an Ubisoft game. Yeah, Ubisoft's kind of. Dumb about that. Yeah. Fucking Uplay. No one's going to use Uplay. Stop pushing that on people. It's like Steam, but better. No, it's like Steam. <laughs> if Steam were like a tumor, that they're like, well, we can get rid of the tumor, but you can't use your arm anymore. And so you're like, well, I guess I just keep the tumor until I'm done using my arm. And in this case, the arm's the game. If anyone's following me anymore. <laughs> Uh, Xbox One backwards compatibility now up to 250 games. So that's neat. Good for them. This was announced by Major Nelson, who I can't believe is still there. I felt like they already really got most of the 360 games that needed to be ported. Hasn't Major Nelson been with Xbox since we were like fucking 10? <laughs> well, I mean, I think he'd stay there, stick I mean, around. It's just... He... He's in this exact same position for so goddamn long. Maybe he's very happy. I guess. And he he looked old when we when the Xbox came out, like 2002. Was it that long ago? I don't even remember. Halo 2 was out on the X, the original Xbox and that was in 2004. That's when yeah, I guess it must have been like 2 or 3. So 2002. Okay, well, let me look this up. Xbox. Oh, no, I believe it cuz Final Fantasy 10 came out in like 2000. X bags. Or was it two thousand one? November fifteenth, two thousand one. So we were eleven. So since we were eleven, the the problem with Major Nelson is he's had he's had fucking gray hair the whole time. Well, I mean, how old is he? he oh my, he could not have been that old when he first had gray hair. Major Nelson. Okay, you can't just search Major Nelson on Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, no, no, there it is. Uh, his name is Larry Herb. 
Herb. Kareeb. H R Y B. Major Nelson. Oh, it doesn't have an H for Major Nelson. Well, Major Nelson is from I Dream of Genie from the 1960s, so that's given us somewhat of an idea of how old he is. He was in the show? He wasn't in the show. But, I mean, if that's if that's his pop culture that he's coming up with to make his gamer tag, oh, okay, you gotcha. gotta think, like, that's something he watched. <laughs> Um, his voice, his voice has appeared in multiple vid- video games. Uh, Explosion Man, Gunslinger. It's also in the credits of numerous games. <laughs> he had a non-speaking role of the scorekeeper in the Guards vs. Students football scene in the movie Sleepers, starring Brad Pitt, Kevin Bacon, Robert De Niro. Since Larry was in a scene with Kevin Bacon, this gives him a bacon number of one <laughs> and six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Wow, that's a that's a good claim to fame there. Wow. Okay, you can now pay Blizzard to change your battle tag. Oh, finally they added that? Yes. People have been asking for that forever. Because I gave everyone a free one when Overwatch came out, but people have been been like asking for it because there's a lot of people with really dumb gamer tags out there. Yeah. Like I saw like three or four Harambe's and I was like, you know, oh two years God. from now you're yeah, going to really want that changed very quickly. Um, anyone ha- unhappy with their battle tag now has the opportunity to pay Blizzard to change it for ten dollars. You could take a mulligan on your battle tag and come up with something better. That's surprisingly cheap considering they charge like fifteen for change your name and wow. It's worth noting that the <laughs> first battle tag change is free apparently. It's the subs- subsequent ones that cost money. Are they giving everyone a free one now, or everybody who uses a free one from Overwatch doesn't get another one? It does not explain. I am giving you all the information I have. I don't need to change my battle tag. I've had it the same since <laughs> StarCraft Two. I think, is when they added like the actual usernames for it. Backstreet Boys, 1998. Yep. <laughs> it's uh, Justin Timberlake, XOXO. Alrighty, so that will do it for gaming news. Let's go ahead and talk about technology. Unfortunately, we talked about the iPhone 7's headphone jack last week. I'm sure you had something to say. iPhone 7 looks like shit. There we go. Alright, let's go into technology. I am programmed for your pleasure. Floppy disks, CDs, and Blu-rays. This is technology news. Please assume the position. You know who that is? Yeah, it sounds like, uh, what's his name from Fallout? Fisto. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you ever watched the uh, the Fallout Storyteller series? Hmm. Oh my god, it's so fucking good. It's basically it's like it's a machinima, but it's a uh, a guy. He's a Brotherhood of Steel knight, but he just he wanders the wasteland basically, just all over the place, and runs into people, and he he just fucking tells stories, and it's a good way to just. I guess get into the lore of Fallout because he'll just mention everything from like from Vault City to the Brotherhood chapters to Children of the Atom. Like he'll just talk about those things. But there is an April Fool's episode about the development of Fisto <laughs> that is so fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh my god! On Friday, Twitter shareholder Doris Shenwick filed a lawsuit against the company for allegedly misleading investors about its growth projections. The lawsuit claims that in November 2014, Twitter promised investors that the size of its active monthly user base would increase to $550 million in the intermediate term and to over $1 billion in the longer term. Shenwick int- intends to file a class action lawsuit that would represent people who bought Twitter stock between February 6, 2015 and July 28, 2015. Twitter currently has 313 million active monthly users as of June. To put that in context, Instagram has 500 million active monthly users and Facebook has 1.71 billion. Snapchat, which was founded in 2011, has more active users than Twitter, which was founded in 2006. So basically, they're suing Twitter for not being popular enough. I didn't think Twitter was that unpopular. <laughs> I thought it definitely would have had at least 500 million users. I'm surprised it does not have 500 million users. <laughs> like, 
Like Instagram has five hundred million. Facebook, god damn, they're almost up to two billion. Well, I mean, everybody around the world uses Facebook, and like, but that's that's still super too, crazy. But... That's like you're approaching like a third of the world. How many of those people are like the bots, though? <laughs> like, there's the hey, I'm your aunt. Yeah. I, my f- profile got deleted. Oh my god, that's so funny. Or how many people have? My Little Pony and Avatar anime, or, uh, like anime avatars. <laughs> they don't count as people. <laughs> they shouldn't. Uh, so, oh, let me try and find the city. Philadelphia, their public transit system is going to use the uh, water repelling paint, which is to prevent public urination. Oh, that's so you, smart. You can't just, can't just pee in a well. There's an issue with it. It's an issue you probably wouldn't have expected, but in San Francisco, they did the same thing. They coated their buildings with this this paint so to curb public urination. Well, the problem is it has to go somewhere, so it bounces back, and apparently San Francisco has had problems with light poles rusting Ugh. at the bottom, and one nearly fell and hit someone. Ugh. It fell, but didn't hit someone. It, it was close. So they're reevaluating this and seeing exactly what they can do about the public urination problem. But I, I don't know. Maybe the public transit system, even if it does bounce back, you know, may, maybe there's not a light pole there, you know, that it can rust out. So maybe it'll work better. But San Francisco did indeed have problems with fucking light poles breaking, which is ridiculous. Can't they just make another bathroom? Like, wouldn't that be the easiest? Everyone can use just a bathroom. No, a city worker can come by every day and take out the trash. See, that costs money. Yeah, that costs money. Instead, we're just gonna paint all our buildings with like water repellent paint. That's cheaper. Probably, probably not. At all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you only have to ba- paint the base floor. I guess. Um, yeah, I guess it's like some sort of clear coat that you just put on shit. So if you got on a chair and and peed above the ba- <laughs> the baseboard, all right, man allegedly burned by Galaxy Seven Note is suing Samsung. Oh, it was only a matter of time. Yeah, we talked about this last week too. The Galaxy Seven's exploding. I'd still rather take an exploding phone over the iPhone Seven. You know, I probably would too. I'll take my chances and yeah. listen to my music. I'll just. When I'm charging my phone, I'll just stick it in the fridge. (laughs) (laughs) I heard the TSA actually put like a, you can't fly with Galaxy Note 7s if they're on. Yeah, I heard the same thing. They demand you at least turn them off. Yeah, well, I'm I'm glad I don't have, I don't have either. Like, I don't have iPhone or Galaxy. Well, I have the S7 Edge, which is the first phone to actually outsell the iPhone. Oh, yeah. It's really nice. I've got the Droid Turbo, which I've liked quite a bit. So Pluto is emitting x-rays. It's really weird. Well, maybe they have like a broken leg. They're trying to get it looked at. (laughs) (laughs) Pluto appears to be emitting x-rays, high energy radiation associated with gases and temperatures of a million degrees. That makes Pluto the furthest known x-ray source in our solar system. If confirmed, the finding could reshape our understanding of the dwarf planet's atmosphere. Before we'd seen Pluto up close, most astronomers imagined it to be a dead little nugget of ice and rock. But as the New Horizons spacecraft got closer, it started detecting signs of an atmosphere. This got a group of researchers, including Casey Lissy of John Hopkins Applied Science Laboratory and Scott Wolk of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, wondering if Pluto might be visible in the X-ray part of the spectrum. I like how I said all that without stumbling. That's impressive. It was impressive. Maybe it's just like aliens messing with us. <laughs> yeah. Watch this. Okay, everyone turn on your microwaves at 10. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they can read this. Fucking idiots. So that'll be interesting. They, uh, they're they going to see if they can see it through the x-ray spectrum. They're going to see if it's actually giving out x-rays. It's kind of crazy. Pluto has a weird fucking glow to it. Pretty nuts. I mean, do you admit x-rays? No. I'm sure I do. Sometimes. A woman suffers $9,000 Verizon bill for no apparent reason. 
It sounds accurate. There have been a number of FCC complaints against Verizon this week after other customers said their data usage skyrocketed for no obvious reason. Her monthly bill averaged 118 gigs or $118 for 4 gigs of data until July when she went on vacation and found herself with without Wi-Fi. She received a text from Verizon notifying she was over her data limit and asked if she'd like to purchase more. She chose to upgrade her plan to 8 gigabytes a month. Over the next hour, she received 40 text messages from Verizon repeatedly asking whether she'd like to buy additional data. She ignored the message, assuming there was some sort of glitch. She was shocked to find out her account when she checked her account and found out she owed the company thousands of dollars. And because of the outstanding balance, Verizon shut off her phone. When she went to cancel her plan, Verizon tacked on an additional fee, making the grand total she owed the company $9,153.46 for allegedly using 569 gigabytes of data. How would you even do that on Bullshit, phone? yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not even possible. Bullshit. There's no way. You would have to work so hard to use that. that I could, that I could barely do that on my computer, and yeah. I'd have to yeah, really me, try. Me too. The, that month I installed all my Steam games. I, I pushed about 500 gigs. So think about that on a phone. That's yeah. impossible. There's not enough time to do that on a phone. Yeah, there's not enough time. What are you going to do? Stream uh, stream radio or something? Like watch Netflix? Like you're well, gonna even have to then, do that. streaming radio doesn't take that much yeah, data. Yeah, so you're going to have to do that like 24-7 all month, and you probably won't even come close to that. Yeah, I don't even think that's feasible. <laughs> Her story was picked up by the media. She plans to fight the charges in court. The Plain Dealer published a story about the incident. Verizon reportedly resolved the issues with Curvis. We've talked to the customer who reportedly owed the $9,000 monthly wireless bill and resolved it to her satisfaction. What are the amount was? Hopefully not more than like $120. Yeah, they better have just waived it to what her original overage was. Which would have been, I don't think those overages are really that insane. No, I mean, they tend to be, I think they're like 10 cents for like, or I don't know how much it is. I know my little brother's gone over several times. <laughs> so, yeah, that's crazy. But this reminds me that last month, so I have my phone capped at three gigs a month for mobile data. Mm -hmm. Because we, we have a family plan that we all that we pay into like how do i put it instead of because a family plan's cheaper like together so that's why i've never been like oh let me get my own plan i'm like no fuck that i'll just pay for my well, i'm still on my mom's yeah. plan too i was like i'll just pay for my phone because it's fucking cheaper <laughs> like, yeah so i spend 80 bucks a month on both me and my wife's phone and we both have really? she yeah. has an s5 and i have an s7 yeah i, I spend 45 bucks a month on my phone yeah, it's yeah. way cheaper. <laughs> yeah, it's way cheaper. So, so because of the, the because of the fact that we have a family plan, we have twelve gigs of data to share between all four of us. Yeah, I think we have like sixteen between the four of us. Yeah, so I have my I have my data to cap off at three gigs. So, like, if I hit three gigs of data, my mobile data will just shut off. And I have like a bunch of data saving features on there though, so I don't really come close to it. But last month. Our our billing cycle is like the second the second of the month through the first of the next month. You know, and then it repeats on the second of mm -hmm. the following month. I was like four days in and I was approaching two gigabytes. And I have no idea how I got there so fast. I actually just got a text today saying that our data limit's been reached too. <laughs> really? Because like I can show you this on my phone. Because mine was like like, I think it resets today. They're like, you have 0% left, and you have zero days until your next cycle. Like, thanks? I know nobody's going to be able to see this here, but... Look at that cliff right there. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So it jumped up, and then I put on all the data-saving features, and, like, it barely went up. So, like, all month last month, I used 200... Or, 200... 264 gigs. 2.64 gigabytes. And so far this month, I mean, we're over halfway through the month and I haven't even used a gig yet. Yeah, I think my mom actually got something that you can do now is if you get close to it, they, like, throttle your speed back significantly. Oh, throttle. Oh. 
interesting. I have it to if I hit two gigabytes, they warn me, and then when I hit three, it just that's it. Yeah, I think it's it's supposed to be like it. If you hit ten percent for the family plan, it just throttles everybody's speed, so you don't get overage charges. Because hmm. my brother was consistently going over. Yeah, he would. Which brother? Hunter doing Snapchat yeah, and all would. that dumb shit. <laughs> all right, let's close this baby out with some news. When there's some strange news in your neighborhood, who you gonna call? Three hit combo. Miss you, Tam. Miss you, buddy. Sounds like Julia White there. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> An 81-year-old man allegedly punched a fellow pensioner and struck him with a shuffleboard cue. Florida? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the confrontation Wednesday afternoon occurred at the Pinellas Park Senior Center, which included an open-air pavilion with 16 shuffleboard courts. Dude, those things are kind of dangerous. I used to play shuffleboard like on vacation stuff. Yeah. They're like little lances. kind. Of, well, I mean, like they're pronged, but they're like soft. But I mean, if you like swung it, they're like metal. Probably do some damage. The 81-year-old man, Herbert Hayden, had a verbal argument that escalated to a physical altercation. Hayden allegedly punched the victim, James Sutton, in the face and hit him with the shuffleboard cue, causing damage to both cues. Yeah, I am like on the verge of sneezing, but I don't want to sneeze. <laughs> I am like, I am like right fucking there. If you look at the sun, you'll sneeze. It doesn't work for me. Like, oh, they, really? they say look at lights and I'm just like. Well, if I look at a regular light, it doesn't work. But if I look at like the sun. At the sun. God. Okay, it's gone. Uh, cops noted, Sutton, cops noted, sustained a pair of four inch scratches on the right cheek of his face. Sutton's age is not. Included in the court findings, but if he was at the retirement home, I'm gonna guess old. Probably. Oh, maybe he's like Chris Metzen from Blizzard. He's retiring at forty. Oh my god. Yeah, I I'm gonna guess that even though you have retired at forty, you're probably not going to the senior center to play shuffleboard. <laughs> you might go do something a little more cool. All right, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is warning us. About salmonella. You know how you can get salmonella? Eating raw chicken? Ah, but according to the CDC, kissing chickens. Of course. Oh, they have them. I have to stop that now? Yeah. The CDC oh. reported in a study Wednesday that the increased popularity of backyard poultry flocks has coincided with an uptick in salmonella outbreaks associated with live poultry. I'm I'm assuming and praying that this is just like little kids that are like, like they pet they kiss their dogs or something like that. But I have a feeling that's not so wholesome. The C D oh my god, <laughs> you're probably right. Well, the the C D C at least says it's a little bit more wholesome. The C D C looked at cases that occurred between 1990 and 2014, and found that some people affected by engage were infected by engaging in risky behaviors. Okay, it doesn't sound that that wholesome including cuddling <laughs> kissing and in some time in some cases letting chickens roam in their bedrooms and bathrooms Ugh. they like shit everywhere and smell bad yeah that's that's fucking stupid so oh my god of the cdc sample incidents 62 percent of patients reported exposure to baby poultry which includes chicks and ducklings. Okay, I can see like a little kid like kissing a little chick or Of that duckling. 62%, 49% reported cuddling with the baby poultry. 46% reported letting them in their living rooms, kitchens, bedrooms, and bathrooms. 13% reported kissing the baby poultry. I mean, I don't know about kissing, but I mean, I mean little ducklings are cute. I can see like just cuddling with them, like having them on you, around you, petting them. But if you're going to get salmonella, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Tyler, you want a reason to love Mexican food? Uh, I don't need a reason. That's true. Did you see there's going to be taco trucks in every corner? Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, me neither. Two police officers and a burrito are receiving praise for their brave rescue of a kitten stuck in a drainage pipe. 
two officers of the Parlier Police Department in California used a piece of a partially eaten burrito to lure the hungry animal from the pipes. The rescue effort on Monday also included some meowing by the officers. My God. <laughs> they were probably on their knees holding a burrito <laughs> in front of them meowing. <laughs> Those brave men. The kitten is safe and in the care of Parlier Animal Control. No, oh, no, it's going to be put down. Don't say that. <laughs> uh, oh, ooh. authorities also said one of the officers hopes to adopt the kitten. Yeah, he's just saying that. And name the kitten Burrito. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> he might just be saying that, though. That is true. Yeah, sure, I'll adopt it and name it. Looks down at his burrito. Burrito! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tyler. That'll do it for this episode of the podcast. Thank you for filling in. Yeah. It's been fun. As Leaper would say, it's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. It's been real fun. <laughs> So remember, you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash 3 hit combo podcast. Oh my god, I fucked it up. I haven't fucked that up in like three years. See, it's because I'm here. 3 hit combo podcast on Facebook, twitter.com slash 3 hit combo PC. Search for us on YouTube, 3 hit combo podcast, and email us, 3 hit combo podcast at gmail.com. Remember, we are the defenders of the nudes. Send us your nudes and they will never get out. <laughs> so for Tyler, this is Matt signing out.